Hey, it's Mike, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to take an animation that you created in Apple Keynote and use it in your iMovie project using the green screen effect. Now, in another video, I show you how to do the same thing using alpha channel transparency. There's a link to that video on the screen and in the description below. Now, frankly, I find the alpha channel transparency method gets better results, it's a bit cleaner. But if for some reason that method doesn't work for you, like say if Apple updates their software and it breaks the functionality, well then you can try this green screen method instead. Let's jump in. All right, we're gonna start here in Keynote. I'm using Keynote version 9.2. And the example I'm using for this tutorial is this simple lower third animation I created using Keynote's built-in graphics tools and animations. I'm gonna play this lower third animation so you can see it in action. So I'll go up to the top menu and select play. Now my lower third animation is set to manually advance on click. So I'll just click through so you can see the animation. So we click and we have the rectangle shape come on. Click again, text dissolves on. Click again, text dissolves off. Click again and the rectangle shape flies off the screen. I'll hit escape to get out of the slideshow mode. So let's take a closer look at my slide here. So I have my lower third animation here, and then underneath I have this image. Now this is a frame of video I exported from the actual iMovie project I'm gonna be using this lower third animation in. I used this frame as a size and position reference for building my lower third animation here in Keynote which I highly encourage you to do with your animations. You don't wanna be having to scale your animation later in iMovie because you got the size wrong. It could degrade the quality. So it's good to work with a reference. And speaking of quality, for the best results, before you start building your Keynote project, match the resolution of your Keynote project to your iMovie project. Now you can set the resolution of your Keynote project in the document properties settings. Then you just go down to slide size. You select the drop down menu and select custom slide size. And then enter the pixel resolution of your iMovie project. So you can see mine is set to 1920 by 1080, which is the resolution of my iMovie project. Now, if you're wondering how I brought this reference frame of video into Keynote from iMovie, in my iMovie project, I positioned the playhead on the frame I wanted to export, then went up to the top right of the iMovie interface and selected the share button. And then from the pop-up menu, I selected image, and that exported my selected frame of video on the timeline as a JPEG image. Then I just dragged and dropped the exported JPEG image into Keynote and placed it underneath my lower third. All right, now I'm going to export this lower third animation out of Keynote and use it in iMovie. So the first thing I'm gonna do is hide this reference image. I won't delete it, just in case I need to come back into Keynote and make some adjustments. So to hide the background image, I'll select it. I'll go over to the properties panel and I'll select the format button and under the style tab, I'll go down to opacity and I'll drag the opacity all the way down to zero and the image disappears. So now I'm left with the black background of the slide. I'm gonna change this black color to green by first clicking off of the slide to deselect it. That brings up the slide layout settings up here. So then I'll go down to background and select the custom color picker, this little colorful circle. And then I'm gonna select color sliders and make sure they're set to RGB. Now I wanna choose a pure green color. That will give me the best results when I key my animation later in iMovie. So I'll make sure the red slider is set all the way down to zero and I'll make sure the blue slider is set all the way down to zero. And then I'll bring the green slider all the way up to the max setting of 255. And now the background of my slide is pure green. 
All right, next I'm going to export my lower third animation as a video file that I can use in iMovie. So to do that, I'll go up to File, Export to Movie, and I get the Export menu. From the Playback dropdown, I'll select Self Playing. I'll leave Slides set to All, since I only have one slide. And I won't touch Go to Next Slide After, because again, I only have one slide. Go to Next Build After, I'll leave set to 2 seconds so that each of the animations or builds on my slide will play automatically after two seconds, which is fine for this example. All right, next I'll select the resolution for my exported movie. So from the drop down menu, I'm going to select custom. Now, in most cases, you want this to match the resolution of your slides. So my slides are 1920 by 1080 resolution. So I'll enter that into these fields. Next, I'll select the compression type. Now I'm going to select Apple ProRes 4444 to get maximum quality. Now, Apple ProRes 4444 produces big file sizes because there's next to no compression happening on export. But I personally like to preserve as much quality as possible during the editing process so that I can get the best results in the end. Now, file size is an issue with your particular animation. You can drop down to Apple ProRes 422 or even H.264. I'll select Next. And that brings up this Save dialog. So I'll save my file to the desktop and I'll give it a name and select Export. And Keynote will export my lower third animation as a QuickTime movie. All right, let's hop over to iMovie. So here we are in iMovie. This is version 10.1.13. Now I already have this video clip on the timeline in my iMovie project. So I'm just going to go and grab that lower third animation that I exported out of Keynote with the green background. And I'm going to lay it on top of this video clip. So I'll find my exported QuickTime file. And I'll just drag and drop it on top of the video clip in the iMovie timeline. So here's my keynote animation with the green background on the second track above my video. Now making sure my green background clip is still selected, I'll go up to the menu above the viewer and I'll select this first icon, Video Overlay Settings. And then from this drop down menu that says Cutaway, I'm going to select from the menu choices, green, blue screen. And the green background in my QuickTime movie disappears, leaving just my lower third animation. Now, sometimes when you use this green screen method, you can get a very thin green fringe around the edges of your image or animation. Now you can reduce this fringe by going up to the softness slider and sliding it to the right. Now that usually works, but sometimes it doesn't get all of that fringe, which is why I prefer the alpha channel method for this kind of thing. You just get a cleaner result. But this green screen method will do the trick. Here's the final render of my iMovie project with the Keynote lower third animation green screened over my video. Whether you use the green screen method or the alpha channel method, the ability to overlay or composite keynote graphics and animations onto your iMovie videos really extends the capabilities of iMovie. Want to know what else iMovie is capable of? Well, then have a look at these other iMovie tutorials on my channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.